everyone welcome to true crime africa and i'm your host detective arkham this channel is going to be about true crime so whoever gets this right congratulations it will be about crime anything pertaining to crime but most importantly it will be based in africa so we'll be talking about murder calls and jewelry our one and only politics yes everything about politics like we don't care we are not scared of anyone we will talk just so nothing bad will happen and this is our channel it's for us it's not just mine it's for everyone if you have any case suggestions you want me to talk about you can just comment it out in the comments and it won't only be based in the country i'm from which is ghana no this is basically about africa so all the countries in west africa southern eastern northern part of africa central every part of africa it's is important that you know that this is for africa so it's um yes i like politics too so we'll talk more about like the coups that happened in africa that shaped our continent into becoming what it is now we'll talk about the into details of it okay and you tell me your opinion and you know anything that you want to talk about so without wasting much time today i have first case and yeah i'm being buzzed because i chose the case which is like from my country and i actually didn't know that my country even had a serial killer like i was so shocked when i found this out and i mean i'm a big fan of true crime i listen to true crime every single day even when i'm eating i listen to true crime so let's not waste much time i want this video to be like informative and short because it's a lot like spoiler alert i don't know if he is a serial killer or just a scapegoat for the police like i'm so shocked myself i just don't know so our serial killer for today is called the accra strangler yes Accra, the capital city of Ghana, had a strangler in the 1990s to the early 2000s. Back in 2000, so let's know more about who this Accra strangler was. So his real name is Charles Papa Kwabena Ebo Kwansa. Okay, and he was born in 1964, so basically four years after Ghana became a republic. For those of you who don't know, Ghana became a republic in the year 1960. Okay, so yes, he be, he was born four years after Ghana became a republic in 1964, and I couldn't find anything about his childhood. I don't know what happened. I don't know how his parents were treating him, but I'm thinking this is an African yeah there will be an abuse because african parents you can't just go a day without doing something like without receiving a slap or something so i don't know much about his childhood i don't know basically anything but i know that he was a mechanic who lived in a dental after um when he grew up i don't know how old he was when he became a mechanic but in africa you know that if you don't go to school your parents mostly take you to like um someone's shop yeah they take you to someone's shop for you to work for the person a person is rather training you to be to become what they are okay so like they will take you to um a seamstress shop and they will give the seamstress like wine or um a crate of drinks for and buy you um the sewing machine for you to start working there and you become a seamstress yourself so i'm thinking in uh, a crash jungler's case i mean i'll be calling him charles from now because i can't be saying a crash jungler all the time so in his case i'm sure his parents sent him there to become a mechanic so he was a mechanic in adenta and as you can see this is adenta this is how it looks like and yes he was a mechanic in this neighborhood and i don't know much if he was that good of a mechanic but what i know is that according to the police 
and the prison records. It was revealed that Kwanzaa was jailed at the James Ford prison for the offense of rape in 1986. So I'm thinking um, he wasn't that much of a good person because he was supposed to be a mechanic working on people's cars and stuff. But here he was raping people and he was sentenced for just a year. I know right now our laws are very good and like very high. If you raise someone, you can go to prison for like 16 years. It's depending on the case, you can go for 30 years and stuff. But at that time, I don't know how the law was, but he went to prison for just one year. And he was sentenced to the James Bond prison, which you see here, this prison, yes. That is where he went to. And after he came back, thinking prison will change him into a new leaf and let him become like a very good person or something oh no oh no 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 oh no 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 this man came out and the year he came out in 1987 he raped another person he literally raped someone as soon as he got out of prison like it was a fun thing to do it was like i feel i feel like at this point he felt like prison was a second home and he wanted to go back because why would you do that right after he came out you, as a human your mind wouldn't tell you to like do something like that but he did people did it so yeah he raped someone and this time he was sentenced to three years in prison it's one of ghana's worst prison service in in Ghana, like this prison, it's so bad, like it's that bad that anyone who goes there never comes back the same because it's that bad. It's not as spacious like when you watch other European movies where you see people being in prison and there's like um two in a room kind of vibe. Oh no, this is the worst of the worst. As you can see up here, see people like basically sleeping on each other yes that is the interwin prison and this man was sentenced to that prison for three years and from there where he came out that was he came out in 1990 he just went moved to accra and that's where he was this man was unstable because he had been to the worst of the worst. He had been to the Insawin prison. And I'm, I'm not going to joke about this prison because I haven't been to this prison before. And I pray I never be to that place. But, I mean, seeing from pictures and videos, you would cry just looking at how bad people are being treated over there. Like, they don't have food, nothing plenty people as like if you watch videos about that prison you, you'll go crazy if they should put you there for two days you get mad like you will be totally out of your mind but this man went there for three years came out and pretended to have turned over a new leaf so nothing of him was heard from 1990 until 19 96 until 1996 where he was arrested again i know i know no i know this time not for rape but rather armed robbery yes the man had upgraded himself to becoming a thief so he was arrested again in 1996 and sent back to his home like i said a year in prison did nothing for him do you think three years will do something basically not not in my opinion no no it did nothing to him so they sent him back into the same prison and he came out right after that he didn't even spend more than months there he just came out and he never stopped so fast forward after he came out he just settled in he moved back to adenta in accra to just stay here and become a mechanic but in in the year 2000 the month of february 
he was arrested again for allegedly or on charges for killing his girlfriend joyce watson yes so let's look at this man's rap sheet so but this man like literally has done the worst of the worst he raped two women okay and he became an armed robber and now he is a murderer but yeah at this point we only knew that he had killed one person because they couldn't find his girlfriend and they suspected that he had killed his girlfriend so when he went to prison big man shows he decided not to talk and after a thorough investigation according to the police he confessed to nine mothers like nine mothers nine and they are all they they were all people he had killed and he knew their names and everything about them yeah doesn't that doesn't sound suspicious at all yeah i know i know but i don't know if it's true or not if he actually did kill all these people but yeah we'll get into it so you let's talk from what i know from what the police said so according to the police after a thorough investigation and questioning charles ebukwansa confessed to the killing of eight women in accra and kumasi yeah kumasi is another part of ghana for those who don't know yeah so that is what the police said that he did he killed eight women plus his girlfriend making nine you get it but they found out that there was a lady in kumasi who is called ekria sewa and she was found strangled at the kumasi sports stadium in kumasi yes and they realized that kwansa had some sort of relationship with that lady because kwansa was friends with a lebanese man who knew that lady yeah it's a long story so i'll tell you what's up so when kwansa was in the insawin prison he was allowed to make friends okay so he made friends with a lebanese man who got him a job in kumase near the sports stadium and as he was there he became friends with ikia sewa and i'm thinking as we all know our man he likes to rape people so he didn't get his way with ikia sewa and then he decided to strangle her and rape her afterwards so the police traced it back to him and then during this time before they had arrested um the Accra strangler charles the um there was panic in the country because everybody was so scared because you wouldn't go a month without you hearing that someone had been murdered and the murderer was going straightly for women he wasn't going for men he wasn't going for children he wasn't going for um i don't know other people he was just going for women so if your sister or your auntie your mother ever stepped out you'll be like so scared thinking will they come back and start and all those you will be so worried about their safety but when this man was caught over 90 women had been killed and according to police files he only confessed for nine but he is alleged to have killed over 34 women but he only confessed to nine so he was tried for the nine and his court was his hearing was held at the accra high court and he was sentenced to be hanged okay to be hanged so technically he's sentenced to death but in ghana here we don't have the death sentence where um you'll be shot or by um lethal injection or, or something like that we just have like hanging you know so they put something on your head and then they hang you on a pole okay so yes uh, as he was in court he decided that uh-uh he's a uh, he is going to talk he won't sit back and let the judge like sentence him to be hanged so he decided that i'm going to talk i will talk and he said 
he never confessed to any of these killings but rather the police tortured him and they listed names of individuals that they thought were actually the killers so he should implicate them and he refused to implicate these people so then the police decided that they are going to let him confess so there is um a statement where he told his lawyer that the police the police um he actually never knew who Ekia Sewa was and he never met the Lebanese man who is actually called William Beta he never actually knew who that man was and he has never met Ekia Sewa he has no relation with Ekia Sewa and as to whether he took the interrogation team to the crime scene to show them where he met at Ikiasewa, Kwanza insisted that he was rather dragged by the interrogators and shown where they say the Kumasi police found the cops. Yes, so he stated that he never sent the police to where um the body was but rather the police were the ones who took him there and Kwanzaa's cellmate who was a defense witness is um a man called George Yao Asari Asamoa and he came forward and told the courts that he saw Kwanzaa every time after an interrogation that he was beaten like beaten very well blood was coming out from his nose mouth ears eyes like he was beaten very well like every single time they come back from an investigation he was beaten very well and he couldn't believe it like it's an it's it's an interrogation you are investigating a crime scene it's an interrogation you are not supposed to beat up the accused to speak up if you beat people up they might say things that are not real but we all know that that an armed robber a murderer and a rapist they tend to lie when they know that they are about to face the music they tend to lie so we are not sure if kwanza was lying but the fact that his cellmate okay who was a defense witness came forward and said it and yes i know most of you are going to say that okay he's a cellmate obviously he's also bad but the fact that he came forward to say it's because you coming forward to say it you know that if you are lying you are swearing under an oath if you are lying and if you are found to be lying it's very bad for you okay so i don't know why he came forward but he said it so then kwanza also claimed that he claims that all this information was made available by his lawyer joseph or amoini sorry amui to the trial judge mrs justice agnes Josie and the jury but they failed not only to see any merit in them but take action on it before sentencing him to death but documents on the court's proceedings available to the network herald indicates that the defense team indeed drew the judge and the jury's attention to the inhuman treatment the accused was subjected to in the police cells and that the statements was not voluntary but after a mini trial the trial judge accepted the confession statement handed in by one inspector Gove in the homicide unit as evidence in proof of charge against the accused stating that if what the DW2 described he saw happen to the accused in the cell if ever happened at all it happened a year before the accused was interrogated and his caution statements taken in respect of this case so you get it so after um after he told the jury and the judge what actually happened to him they had already sentenced him to death but he the lawyer also told the court and the court uh as they um told them that that an inspector 
came over and told them that if what the accuser is saying is true then it happened a year before he was like taken into like prison again for the case he is being tried for right now so it just is it's mind-blowing because i'm like bro you beating up the person it doesn't matter the year but you people beat up a an accused person you see he's like he's um um he's innocent until proven guilty like he, you beat him up and you come back and say that okay it didn't happen now it happened like a year ago so it's not obvious it's obviously not about this case like who does that no one does that and before i forget in his trial they said there was a lie detector test they had a lie detector test they have two various statements made by accused person before 8 may 2001 and the three tape recording of the confession and a judge upon um all the the, the prison um the police unit to bring forth these this document the lie detector used on the accused and all those the things but they refused to bring them to court and still the judge sentenced him to death there was no evidence just based on what people are saying and yes when the inquiry contacted mr champo he said mr champo being the igp so mr champo was actually the man who was heading the case at that time and when he heard the accused talking from prison he decided to speak up and before he headed that case the case was so severe because everybody was wondering who the Accra strangler was and they called in the fbi to come investigate and the man's name was showing up everywhere so after he was caught uh, mr echampo who was then not the igp decided to speak up and said that he asked when he was handling that case none of these things came up and he didn't receive any support from the court so he has nothing to say about this case and yeah i'm gonna say something here but i hope i don't get into trouble for this but the man became an igp after he had arrested this man so i mean it was it was his like aim to arrest him and then become an igp and get a position or something i don't really know the details but i know he became an igp after this case so i am through all this the 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 marks are his back for the iron the police use on his back the blood everything none of it was taken into consideration he can't go for an appeal and he is still in prison yeah he is still in prison still there no one's talking about his case basically it's like we've forgotten about this story because not everyone knows about it so it's been over he was sentenced in 2002 so it's been a long ride like a very long ride because it's like it's over 20 years now since he's been there and he's still on the death row and i'm waiting to see when they will actually take that into consideration i'm thinking they are just waiting for him to just die in prison but i don't know about this case it's too much i don't have like the time to go into detail because this is my first case and i don't want to bore you people off by saying everything so um thinking i will end here for today to just show you that i don't know is he a scapegoat or a serial killer did he commit this crime or did the police force him to commit this crime and do the police have the correct man or they have a wrong person that's up to you people to decide and tell me if it's okay if you want more i can do a part of this case and tell you more into details about what actually happened with the igp and the and Kwanzaa's lawyer and stuff so yeah that's all for today thank you for watching please remember to like 
subscribe and share to your friends thank you love you bye